everybody. Welcome back. Thank you so much for stopping by and coming and hanging out with me today. My name is Jojo. For those of you who are new here, this channel focuses on my family's journey to financial freedom. And in today's video, this is one of my favorite videos to film and my favorite videos to watch. I'm doing my um, end of the month closeout. We're closing out paycheck number two. And this is technically a paycheck that was for September, but it trickled into covering some bills into October, the first week of October. But we're going to be zeroing out this paycheck and applying money towards debt. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we will start with is reconciling variable expenses using this transaction log here. All of my variable expenses are highlighted in yellow. And over here you can see we did our week three check-in last Thursday. I'll link that video in an information card up here if you wanna check it out. So we'll just go ahead and move right in. Um, this is still for paycheck number two. And the dates that it's covering are October 1st to October 7th are the transactions we'll be looking at. And this is for week four. This is all of our variable expenses. I'm just gonna start up here at the top. And I like to use this remaining section over here on my transaction log to figure out the totals rather than adding all of the different expenses together. So just as an example for you guys, um, I come and find the last purchase I made within that current category I'm looking at, which we're looking at groceries right now. And what I do is I take how much I budget, which is $400, oh, to last us two weeks for groceries. And then this negative, since this is remaining, we are in the hole $64.14. So I'll add the 64.14. So we spent $464.14 on groceries the last two weeks. If I wanna find out how much I spent during week four, what I do is subtract what I spent during week three, which was 316.77. And that tells me that I spent this 100 and $47.37. And then the remaining is that negative 64.14. And then when I go to put in how much I spent the last two weeks on my paycheck budget sheet, you'll see this 464.14 be entered there. All right. And I've gone ahead and already added everything up just for the sake of saving time, but I do always like to start with an example for those of you who are new or if you're just kind of confused on how I come to my numbers. But next for eating out and entertainment, we did not spend anything this week. Thank goodness we already spent so much last week, but um, we still remain negative $43.08 for household and pets. I did have to buy a couple of things. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, yes, you guys will see. We had a lot of expenses for our house just with the fall. We're having to stain our fence. Um, we had to buy a new paint sprayer for that. That all came from sinking funds, which we'll look at later. But we have been getting wasps really bad this year you guys we have a basketball hoop that we got from my sister-in-law and there was a wasp nest in there and we thought that we got rid of the wasp nest but i don't know you know like they have their senses so i don't know if the wasps in our neighborhood just smelt that there was a nest that they could come and move into but we have not really ever had a wasp problem like this before. And um, so we had to buy a bunch of traps just to decrease the, I guess, the nest size so that my husband could go and spray it. And um, so that's still kind of an ongoing process. But each wasp's nest was about $6 from Walmart. So that was one of those purchases for household. Um, that you'll see from Walmart, because we ended up buying a total of five wasp nests, so that was $30 just for wasp nests. <laughs> 
How many times can I say wasp, wasp nest? It's, say it three times fast. It's really hard to do. <laughs> okay, so I did not spend anything this week. I had spent plenty last week. It was my birthday week, so um, kind of went a little crazy. Um, but it was, it was a really good week. And that's a part of um, my word for this month is balance. We're trying to find this balance in our budget and making sure that you know we're not just focused on debt but also finding a balance on how to live our lives um, while still paying off debt and allocate our finances in that way which i think is what we're all um, really trying to figure out <laughs> on this channel is how to find that balance let's see so my daughter um some of the kids' expenses, like my husband, um, the kids are on fall break. He had taken her out um, to go fishing. My son was at daycare, so they kind of had a daddy-daughter day. They went hiking. She found, she didn't really fish. Um, they caught a lot of seaweed, is what my husband had told me, or the little grass that grows. But there was little chipmunks and a beautiful trail, which um, they kind of went exploring. I'm going to go take the kids. Um, back up to the area he was at take all of the kids because I guess it is easy for like my three-year-old to kind of roam around as well um, and you know we love the outdoors there's nothing like the outdoors to make you feel better so yeah I thought that would be a lot of fun um, found it discovered a new place to take the kids total spent this week week four was 316 dollars which was much better than last week but we are still over budget by 760 dollars and 34 cents and five this 500 dollars of that i explained that during last week's video but that's being covered by savings so really it's like $260 that we're over that isn't being covered by an extra amount, but it's still a lot. Um, yeah, but it is what it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and get you guys switched over to the paycheck budget sheet. We'll finish reconciling our transactions and pull this information in and figure out how much money we're throwing at debt. Okay, here we are at my paycheck budget sheet. I'm first looking at income. So during our week one check-in is where we, our week three check-in is where we filled in the actual amounts for paychecks. Um, then what our rollover was, because I do roll over all the money from paycheck one to paycheck two. And we did have that one extra. This was that savings transfer for $500. Um, I was talking about last week and I told you um, was to help cover $500 of an unbudgeted expense from week three check-in and I didn't have any other extra income. Those are all green boxes on my transaction log and there's not any extra income so what we can do is put in, we'll circle this is extra and it is that $500. And now we will add everything together. Sorry, I put on lotion, my hands are sticky and I keep sliding on the paper. <laughs> okay, so let's add everything up. We have 3,117, 65 plus 12, 85, 92 plus 27, 48, 61 plus 500. Okay, so our income we're looking at for paycheck two is $7,652.18. Now what we'll do is move over here to this fixed expenses section. Make get you guys lined up here. We're pretty good there. And that is my pink boxes on my transaction log. The first one we have here is our mortgage. It came out as expected at 14.02.07. Go ahead and check it off. Next is our internet bill. That also came out as expected at 94.99. 
Then we have our Sling TV and it came out as expected at $50. Okay guys, this HP ink, I was blown away by that, but when I think about the week um, that we printed a lot of stuff, so I budget $5. I have never been over $5 on my HP ink bill. It was at $22.74 for this month. And that's because we had one week where we were doing all distance learning and I was printing, I kid you not, about 16 pages every day for five days a week. And that was, a lot of that was just for my daughter. And then my oldest, he also, um, he's on a hybrid, he's in high school. And so he has to print stuff too for um, math, geography, and PE, all sorts of different stuff, at least every other day. So there, that was kind of a one-off the week that my daughter was doing Zoom all week. So I'm gonna leave that our um, account the same for Zoom and or for HP Inc. And I'm hoping that we're not gonna have another $20 month. But that's gonna be written in red, flaming red, because that is a huge amount. Um, but I am really enjoying this service. Let's see, next was student loan number two, and it came out as expected at $543.40. And then we have our car payment, and it came out as $744.17. over the gym. Let's see, the gym, it came out, whoops, came out as expected at $75. Okay, had a lot of bills this paycheck, you guys. And then security, that came out as expected at $9.99. And when you add all of these together, all of our fixed expenses together, it comes to $4,101.36. And we were over budget because of that HP ink bill. Now, what we'll do is move over to our variable expenses, and there's gonna be a lot of red over here. A lot, a lot of red. Okay, so groceries, last two weeks we spent $464.14. Eating out was $143.08. Household and pets. We were also over budget. We spent $160.69. Gas, finally one we're under budget, was $140.67. My husband, he had spent $76.70. I spent $71.48. My oldest, he had spent $40.25, and then my daughter was $42.94. My youngest, he was $9.46, and sometimes these two are tied together, so I'll just kind of lump whatever I think it was that they got as far as treats at the gas station for all three of them and just throw it on to whatever kid. So um, that's kind of how this spending comes about, but my oldest has been doing a lot of yard work, helping us get our yard ready for fall, um, just doing some extra stuff around the house in addition to his regular chores, so that's where um, a lot of his came in. And then, let's see, the unbudgeted was unreal at $525.93, but $500 of that was covered by this savings transfer I did. The other unbudgeted, I'd had like a dentist appointment. And then, trying to remember what my other 
unbudgeted was, oh, my husband bought the kids a slip and slide. You guys, I have a, um, a, a man child, but I, I love it. It keeps, you know, your kids keep you young at heart, so I'm not really going to get angry about anything like that because I was just as excited to see that he'd gotten a slip and slide as well. Um, but he's the one that's more prone to make those purchases. He's the spender, I'm the saver. And you know, it's a nice balance for our family. But okay, so moving down here. Okay, so that's, sorry, that's what we spent total for variable expenses. Ridiculous, I know. Um, now I'm gonna bring in my transaction log and all of the blue boxes are our sinking fund purchases. The first one was um, a car battery. My husband got to work and the battery in our car had died when he went to go run an errand on his lunch break. He went out to start the car and just got that click, click, click sound. <laughs> So he'd stopped and picked up a battery, but we do have a car maintenance sinking fund that we just pulled from. I am, I am loving sinking funds, you guys. They, I don't know where they have been my entire budget. Like this has been probably the biggest game changer is having sinking funds. Um, next we had our HOA fee that came out and I had kind of had to do some money shuffling because I didn't realize that it was this amount. Um, and it's quarterly, so I changed how much I'm allocating um, every month to the HOA sinking fund, and I'd had to shift around some money from a different category just to help out with that. And you know, it's it's your budget, so make it work for you. Um, let's see. So then, kids' clothes, we had spent nine dollars. I got my son some pants. He is tall and skinny, you guys. So I am having a hard time getting pants for him, um, drawstring ones. So we have kind of all different stages. <laughs> Let's see, home maintenance. There was a lot spent within this category. Um, my husband needed to get some tools to hang a barn door in our laundry room. Um, we've been remodeling our home for really the last five years. So that's kind of a never ending project. <laughs> And then, let me see, this 1950, I'm trying to remember what that was. Can't remember, honestly. Um, and then this Amazon purchase, that was for a new paint sprayer. Um, went to stain our fence and our paint sprayer died, but it was kind of just a cheapo from Harbor Freight. So hopefully this one will last a little bit better. Okay, so those are my sinking fund transactions. When I go to close out my sinking funds at the end of October, you'll see how I use this table to help me um, close those out. And I'll leave a link to my September sinking fund closeout if you wanna check that out and see more about our sinking funds, see more about how I use these tables. Okay guys, this is the, the fun part. I am so excited, we get to see um, how much cash flow we have at the end of paycheck two to throw at debt. This is how we zero out our paychecks. Um, so we're gonna first start here with income, 76, 52, 18, minus, and I don't calculate this part in advance. So I'm, um, I get surprised at the same time you guys do, which is really exciting. Okay, minus. 4101.36. Just making sure I type the numbers in in all my excitement. And then minus 1675.34. Holy smokes! I really didn't think we would do that well because, yeah, it was. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. So. We are going to be throwing, let me make sure I got these numbers right, because here I am like, did my fingers spasm? Okay, it's for real. We are throwing $1,875.48 at debt for this debt closeout. Okay, so down here is my debt table. 
we have paid off three debts so far. Um, I, on my next sheets, I took out the three that we pulled out. I used to leave it in there just kind of as motivation, but now I'm just like, it's just kind of cluttering up my mind and I want to just be laser focused on the last few that we have. Um, so first things first, what I'm going to do is whenever I have a debt that has a minimum payment assigned to that paycheck, so right here you can see the car that came out, when that bill clears, I update this ending balance over here because, um, let's see, so we'll take the 2202.43 minus that. 744.17 and it's 0% interest. It is going to be paid off in December and I cannot wait because y'all look at that payment. I can't wait for that to be worked into my cash flow debt payments. It's That will be wonderful. So $1,458.26 is what it is coming down to. Right, and then the next one that had cleared was my student loan that had come out right here. And we're using a velocity banking strategy. I'll leave a um, link to the playlist in, the, in an information card up here if you guys wanna look more into that. But we're using our home equity line of credit to make um, big chunk payments on the principal of this student loan. Of that $543.40 minimum payment, $384.52 was applied towards principal. So I'm gonna make note of that down here because, let me see, 384.52 so that I can subtract that. So here we have the 48.30.12 minus 384.52. So the new balance on this student loan is $40,445.60. Now we get to write down this $1,875.48. Okay, so our HELOC 17178.39 minus 187.548. That is so cool, you guys. Okay, so we had taken $20,000 from the HELOC and applied it towards student loan number two. And then we're doing some other things like housing accounts within this HELOC to hold that balance down. So we're not being charged interest on this amount. We're actually only being charged interest on about three to $5,000 at a time, um, which again, I have a whole series explaining that. Um, but that is really exciting to see how well this is working for us. Okay, and I'm gonna be doing my Velocity Banking monthly check-in tomorrow. If you wanna see, um, this is our second monthly check-in, so we've only been doing it for two months um, to see what our interest savings is, because that's the goal of it, is to save money on interest on those amortized interest loans. Okay, so let's Find out what our ending balance is. We're, we're gonna be in the 50,000s, you guys. Okay, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, 1458.26 plus 699.93 plus 15.302.91 plus 40.445.6. Four, that is so cool. Okay. We started in February with 102,000, a little over $102,000 of debt. And this is just so exciting to see because this student loan started out at 61-ish thousand dollars when I started this journey. It started out two years ago at $68,000 before I refinanced it. 
but I've been terrified of it and I feel like I am just kind of karate chopping it and this whole number, everything's coming down together. It's so exciting. Okay, you guys, that is um, what we're ending September with, closing out paycheck number two, zeroing out our budget, using our cash flow, knocking out some debt today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had just as much fun as I did. I hope that I wasn't too all over the place because I'm so excited. But um, I will see you guys tomorrow in my Velocity Banking check-in. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're enjoying following us on this journey, please hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. I would really appreciate it and love to um, increase our YouTube family here, our support group, and take you along with us on this financial freedom journey.